thank you very much for coming. It's just an extraordinary number of you here. Absolutely fantastic. Very simple running order. We're going to have Maxine reading an account from Samuel Bamford of the sort of tur turmoil of the attack and the aftermath. We're then going to go through, we've got a lot of biographical detail of each one of the casualties this year, and each one of our, our honoured guests is going to read one of those names. We're then going to have a short excerpt from the uh, Mask of Anarchy, Shelley's poem about Peterloo. I'll let you know roughly what's planned next year, and then we'll finish on some music. So I'd uh, like to invite Maxine to begin a reading of Sam Bamford's account of Peterloo. and their sabres were plied to hew away through naked, held up hands and defenceless heads. And then chopped limbs and wound gaping skulls were seen, and groans and cries were mingled with the din of that horrid confusion. Many females appeared as the crowd opened, and striplings or mere youths were found. Their cries were piteous and heartrending, and would, one might have supposed, have disarmed any human resentment. But here, <coughs> their appeals were in vain. In ten minutes from the commencement of the havoc, the field was an open and almost deserted space. The sun looked down through a sultry and motionless air. The curtains and blinds of the windows within view were all closed. The hostings remained, with a few broken and hewed flag staves erect, and a torn and gashed banner or two dropping, whilst over the whole field were strewed caps, bonnets, hats, shawls and shoes, and other parts of male and female dress, trampled, torn and bloody. Several mounds of human beings still remained, where they had fallen, <coughs> crushed down and smothered, some of these still groaning, others with staring eyes were gasping for breath, and others would never breathe more. I'd now like to invite the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor to begin the 15 names. The first victim of Peterloo was William Files from Kennedy Street, Manchester. The two-year-old boy was knocked from his mother's arms by a cavalryman galloping along Cooper Street in response to the magistrate's order to disperse the crowd. William was trampled to death under the horse's hoof. John Rhodes, who lived in Hotwood, was fatally injured by a sabre wound to the head. Found wandering and covered in blood, he was taken in by a local woman who tried to treat his injuries. He eventually died on the 19th of November. His body was dissected by order of the magistrates who were determined to prove his death was not a result of Peter Lou. The coroner's inquest found that he had died from diseased state of the belly and chest, not his injury. Sarah Jones of 96 Bilkston, Salford, was severely beaten on the head by Thomas Woodworth, a neighbour and special constable who lived round the corner from her in Newton Lane. She was the mother of seven children. Please talk. William Dawson from Saddleworth was sabred and crushed and died on St. Peter's Field. His brother, Edmund Dawson, also from Saddleworth, died of his sabre wound at the Manchester Royal Infirmary. Margaret Downs from Manchester was cut down by a young with sabre. John Lees of Oldham received sabre wounds and was also bludgeoned by constables with truncheons 
and the broken staff from an abandoned banner. He was an ex-soldier who had fought in the Battle of Waterloo. He eventually died on the 30th of August. Thomas Buckley from Bear Tree, Chatterton, was bayoneted and sabred on the field and died the same day. Arthur Neal was from Pigeon Street, Manchester. He was incarcerated without trial in the New Bailey prison but died of internal injuries caused by being truncheoned and crushed. John Ashton, who lived in Cowhill near Oldham, died from his injuries having been sabred and trampled. Ashton had carried the black flag of the Saddleworth, Lees and Mosley Union. Inscribed, taxation without representation is unjust and tyrannical. No corn laws. An inquest jury returned a verdict of accidental death. His son Samuel received 20 shillings in relief. Mary Hayes of Chalton Row, Manchester was ridden over by cavalry. Disabled and suffering from seizures caused by her injuries, she gave premature birth to her seven-month-old child, resulting in her death on the 17th of December. James Crofton of Barton upon Irwell trampled to death by the cavalry. He was buried on the 1st of September. Martha Parkinson, who came from Eccles, was amongst the crowd fleeing from St. Peter's Field. She was pushed down a set of steps into a cellar on Bridge Street, and there, under the weight of other people falling on her, she suffocated. William Bradshaw from Whitefield was killed by a shot from a military musket in New Cross, having fled there after the massacre. <laughs> Joshua Whitworth, the pie, was also shot at New Cross. <coughs> died on the 20th of August. I think it would now be appropriate to just have one minute silence for them. Now, Chris would like to read Shelley's poem, which of course was written in anger and outrage about what happened. Two stanzas, you're not going to be here for an hour, don't worry. <laughs> He's no Maxine. <laughs> Men of England, heirs of glory, heroes of unwritten story, nurslings of one mighty mother, hopes of her and one another. Rise like lions after slumber, in unvanquishable number, shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep have fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. You. You. going to finish with some music shortly. Uh, like I said, this is just an astonishing <coughs> turnout. We've been doing this for seven years with very, very few people coming along and it's suddenly started to grow exponentially. I think the real big message from today is you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Yay! People who gathered for Peterloo were doing it in good humour. They did it as an air of positivity. And had they not been attacked by the cavalry and by the yeomanry, they would have sat, listened to speakers, relaxed, had some food. In fact, they would have basically had a picnic. And that's what we want to recreate next year, the Peterloo picnic. 
where we'll have walks coming in from every single one of the outlying towns that sent contingent. We want to build this up over the years. We want more music, probably some amplification. <laughs> and we want by 2019, the 200th anniversary of Peterloo, to have 60,000 people here. Yeah. here we go. Yay. In the meantime, things are looking very good on the front with the actual physical memorial. As you probably know, the artist Jeremy Dell has been offered the contract. Um, this is very optimistic as far as we're concerned because he is happy to talk to us. He seems to want to sort of chat to people about the whole concept. We should be meeting with him in September, so that's also coming along. But let's really start thinking about building up for 2019 and also just give yourselves a very, very big round of applause. Yeah.